The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Anne Marie Houlihan, and I'm with Q4 Launch. I want to thank you for taking time to join us today. We're going to be talking about blogging 101, uh, the five things you need to know to make blogging worth your time. Uh, typically, you're used to hearing Matt on these webinars. He's actually on vacation. I'm proud to be stepping in and sharing this information with you all today. A little bit of housekeeping. This session is being recorded, and we will send it out to everybody who's registered. Um, there will be a poll question towards the end, so be prepared to participate in that. Thank you. Um, and we'll have a complimentary offer at the end of our session on ways that we can help you uh, take the next step with blogging and start to doing so in a really efficient way. Uh, really quickly about us, we are based in Charleston, South Carolina. We have a team of about 40, all with cross-functional expertise. So we've got uh, graphic designers, content writers, front-end website developers, back-end website developers, analysts, marketing experts, uh, you name it. Uh, a whole group of people who go across all areas of marketing so that we have really deep skills to offer any of our customers. Um, we're proud to have been named on the Inc. 5000 list uh, as one of the fastest growing companies in America. We were ranked 940, but we were ranked number one for uh, number one fastest growing marketing agency in the travel space. And that is the space where we are exclusively dedicated. Um, and then a little bit about our education series. We do webinars twice a month, typically. We've had over 8,000 people uh, participate and, and listen in on our webinars over the years. And we're really, really humbled and grateful for that. Um, and then the other thing that I like to just share with you is, uh, especially as it relates to today's webinar, we know that you know how to form a relationship with your guests, whether you're in an inn or boutique hotel or vacation rentals. You know how to strike up a relationship, ensure that they have an amazing experience on site. This is something that you know very well. And you don't need us to teach you how to do that. But we can help you learn how to do it digitally. So anything that we talk about today really should make perfect sense to you. You should find yourself nodding your head going, yeah, that makes sense. Um, because it's at the root, it's about what you already know how to do. It's about, you know, building trust, answering people's questions, helping somebody have a great experience. We're just showing you how to do it in a digital world. So with that, we'll get right to it um, and start talking about the five things you need to know to make blogging worth your time. I'd also like to say, um, if you have questions, please go ahead and use the chat panel. So the first thing we're going to talk about is blogging with purpose. Blogging can be a real hot, to hot topic term, and people know they're supposed to be doing it, um, and maybe you're even trying to do it. But the question is, is why are you doing it? And uh, what's your goal and are you hitting your goal? So let's just talk and recognize first and foremost that there's a lot of different goals with blogging. So the examples that I like to give, what most people like to see movies, is um, the movie Julie and Julia with Meryl Streep um, and Amy Adams. That was about a woman, a real life woman who got the Julia Child cookbook and decided to cook everything in the book and wrote a, a blog every time she cooked one of the recipes. Uh, in time, she was an aspiring writer. In time, her blog got found, was created in, into a book, and then made its way to the big screen. And so that was how her blog, and that may not have been her purpose, but that was how she ended up making money and making a career with her blog. Conversely, things like the movie blog and Perez Hilton, uh, Perez Hilton is a celebrity blogger. What those folks blog for is to be have a great following and to have enough great content that a lot of people are going to be paying attention to that blog and then advertisers come and they spend money advertising on your blog. Uh, that's how they make their money. What we're talking about is far different. Our purpose for blogging really is to drive people to your website. Uh, and that might be surprising for some of you. Some people think, oh, I have the blog so that when someone books, if they want to know, you know more about the area, they can read my blog. Uh, that's great if that happens, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is somebody who's never heard of you to find themselves on your website, to find themselves delighted because you offered a great answer to their question. And now you're helping them imagine themselves staying in your destination and staying with you. That's the purpose. It's got to be about driving people to your website and then converting them into a person who either books with you or at least gives you their email address. 
So as you look at this example here, everything you need to know about Livermore Barrel Tasting Weekend. This is very specific. This is employing long tail keywords, which I'll talk a little bit more about. But um, it's about, you know, this this customer is in California in a town called Livermore, um, and there's a barrel tasting weekend. This is wine country. And people do search on this. And the reason we know is we went and looked at what are the long tail keywords that people are searching on in this destination. And that's how uh, we start the research for our blogs. So we've talked about this a little bit, but just to reinforce, what's the purpose of your blog? It's to get found online from organic search. Now, those of you hopefully are in your Google Analytics on a monthly basis, at least. If you are, you should see that organic search should be your number one source of traffic. If it's not, there's probably a little bit of a problem. And then if you look at your e-commerce, you should see that that organic traffic converts usually the best or at least as good as your direct traffic. So it makes a lot of sense to chase after organic traffic and the blog is a great way to do it. Ultimately, what it helps you do is get more direct online bookings um, and to be less reliant on the OTAs. Uh, so what you find is when you uh, de when you establish yourself as a destination expert on everything that goes on in your area, you can hopefully get found before an OTA. And I'll, I'll give you a quick example. I'm from Chicago. There's a blues festival there every year. Uh, I can assure you that Expedia.com and BedandBreakfast.com and VRBO, HomeAway, they're not writing about and they're not, they're not writing and they're not showing up for terms around Chicago Blues Fest. Uh, an innkeeper could if they decide to become a destination expert. But if I'm going to Chicago's Blues Fest and I already now I decided I want accommodations and I type in accommodations downtown Chicago, now I'm going to see Expedia. Now I'm going to see VRBO. Um, but you have a chance to intersect with these people when they're in the dreaming and planning phase by answering the questions about the experiences that they're looking for before they're even ready to book. And then the whole beauty of it is if you write your blog in such a way as you help answer their questions and then they're on your website, now they look at your rooms and now you get them ready to go ahead and take the next step. So it's to get found online so that you can get more direct bookings and be less reliant on the OTAs. And you do that by establishing yourself as a destination expert. And it's also a, a big purpose of your blog is to drive long term and long lasting success. So I know for our customers who've been with us three or four years, the very first blog we wrote for them is probably still sending website traffic to them. If it's still a good answer for the question, it's going to be delivering website traffic to your blog posts for years to come. Um, and that's the opportunity is this is not a set it and forget it. You can go ahead and write that one. You can refresh those blogs um, if they are an annual event where the details change, but keep that those blogs can constantly be sending traffic to your website and organic traffic that has an opportunity to really convert. So what does an effective blog page design consist of? So remember, our, our goal is driving traffic and conversion. Uh, and as I mentioned, but I think I mentioned 30 percent of the, the people who visit our customers websites enter through a blog post for the first time. So they're not coming through the home page. They don't even necessarily know that they're about to land on the page of a boutique hotel or a vacation rental or a bed and breakfast. They just are asking a question about, in this case, um, the best things to do on Maui for locals, and they're getting the answer to their question. Well, so what we're doing is we're making sure that we write this post in such a way that it's on a term people are looking for. We've optimized the post so that Google knows that this post is about that term, and I'll tell you more about that later. And then we design the page so that you can encourage people to go deeper into your site, to look at guest rooms, to look at area attractions, to download the vacation guide. That's where we can get their email address or to check out dining. Um, the other thing that we do in this blog is we absolutely provide a good answer to the question. If we don't, we're not building trust. And also Google eventually will catch on that we're not a good answer to the question. But once we answer the question, we start to pivot the conversation to there's so much more to do. Um, and you don't want to just come for a day. You want to come for a couple of days, and now you need a place to stay, and, hey, check out our specials, check out our accommodations. Um, so it's really important the way you design this page because this is your first impression for somebody who's entering your website for the first time through a blog post. Also notice that in addition to the buttons that we have on our, our post design, within the content, we use a lot of hyperlinks. Some people like to click buttons. Some people like to 
go to primary navigation. Other people like to just click on the hyperlinked content. So provide something for everybody. The whole point, you, it's not that hard to make a link. Um, the point is have a good answer to the question and then provide multiple paths for people to engage further with you and your website. So if we take a look at the analytics, because that's a place where we live all the time in Q4 launch. Again, we talk about it being uh, blogging with a purpose. And if our purpose is driving traffic so that it converts, then we have to check and see, are we driving traffic? Now, what you'll see here is very common for, say, a new customer of ours over the first nine to 12 months. Um, you see that here when they start in January, there's very little blog traffic. Now, what this shows you, the blue and orange line, the blue line is all sessions uh, going to a blog, uh, blog page, and the orange is organic traffic. So what you can see is that our the health of our blog page rides on the high tide of organic traffic. Um, so the what's the difference between the blue and the orange? is some of those people in the blue, they got to the blog through an email or maybe when the blog was posted on social media or maybe somebody shared it and said, um, this might be helpful. You might like this um, while you're planning your trip. So there's some other ways that people can get to your blog, but primarily they should be entering through a Google search. And what you see is that in the first couple of months, it takes a while before that traffic really starts to ramp up. Um, and we don't know everything. We don't know everything about Google's algorithm, but we know that Google likes content. We know Google likes fresh content. Um, and we know they know, like a lot of content. So with every post that's 500 to 700 words, as time goes on, we're growing the, the content on your on your website by 500 to 700 words every week, if you're blogging once a week. And you're also um, always having something fresh that's, that's only a week old um, when you have it. And those are things that, that Google will start to reward you for. Uh, but it takes a little bit of time for that to for that to build up. And um, in addition to those best practices of writing enough content, enough words, um, the consistency really matters too. So blogs showing up on page one of Google. So here you can see a couple examples of blogs that we've written for our customers. And unfortunately, they're um, there's a lot on here, so it's a little bit hard to read. Um, but we've got um, we, we're just showing how for the long tail keyword, we're showing up as number one, like underneath the three pack or underneath the ad. Um, we're showing up pretty high level on page one. And that's what's going to make you be a great answer for the question. So here's this one summer sport camps in North Myrtle Beach. There's an ad up here. And then we're actually the number two post after the paid ad. Um, this is how you want to start to see yourself. So if you have been blogging up till now, go ahead and you know, did you did you optimize the post for a keyword? Go ahead into Google and type that keyword. And are you showing up on page one? Are you showing up anywhere at all? Uh, if not, I'm, I feel bad to say that that's not it's not achieving the goal. Uh, so it's not about you know checking the box. Yes, I write a blog. It's you're doing it for a reason. That reason is to be found organically for highly searched keywords. And when you do so, you'll show up on page one and then you'll drive that traffic. So what's the best way to, to use the blog to reach your new guests? Well, one of the things that we think you should start to do is um, do your research. We recommend using a professional writer and, you know, no duh, we all have professional writers here. That's part of what we do as part of our business, but you'll see why uh, in another minute. Uh, we include SEO strategies to get the blog ranked and we're consistent and post frequently. So let's talk a little bit more about the SEO strategies. What you're going to see here is this little table here is a, a quarterly strategy calendar that we would do for one of our customers where we identify all the long tail keywords that um, we're going to write on over the next three months. So we've done our research of making sure that these are relevant to the destination and that they enjoy high search traffic. And that's our first bit of research. Um, the other bit of research is whenever you look at a, a do a search for anything in your area, and I, I invite you to test this um, on your own. You know, think about something that's popular in your destination and, and type it into Google and then scroll all the way to the bottom where you see this thing where all the other additional pages. And you'll see this section that says searches related to, to Corolla horses. In this case, um, that's the keyword that I was searching on. Um, if you can write a blog that's a good answer to the keyword, but also answers questions related to these related searches, 
Now Google really thinks that you've got a good answer for the question, and that's what helps you uh, rank higher and potentially on page one. So this is very much an art and a science, and um, this is the approach that we take for all the blog writing that we do for our customers. And uh, I'll tell you, don't force it. If there's something in here that isn't naturally supposed to be part of the blog, then don't include it. But chances are you'll find two or three of these related um, keywords and you can incorporate those into your blog post, and you might uh, rank for those keywords in addition to the one that you were originally chasing. So when we talked about doing your research and we talk about the long tail keywords, so let's just unpack that a little bit. Um, we're talking about long tail keywords, we're talking about blogging as an extension of your SEO strategy. So your SEO strategy is anybody who's looking for your product and services in your area, you should show up on page one. So if I'm looking for accommodations in Charleston, South Carolina, and I have accommodations in Charleston, Charleston, South Carolina, then I want my business to show up on page one. If I have pet friendly accommodations, if I'm a bed and breakfast, if I'm a vacation rental, uh, whatever it is, those are the long tail keywords that you want for your SEO, because that's the that's the bullseye of what your business is about. And that's when you optimize your homepage and a lot of your subpages on your website from an SEO perspective. But you want to get found on a lot more than that. You'd like to get found for a romantic getaway. You'd like to get found if you're, say, you know, 90 minutes from New York City. You'd like to get found as um, a, a great place to take your honeymoon. Things like that. That's where your blog can come to the rescue. You still use long tail keywords and they're still relevant to your destination. There's still terms that people search on. Uh, but it allows you to be found and considered for a whole bunch of other things. Um, I think I can give you one other tiny little example here in Charleston. Uh, for better or for worse, we, we are a historic city. Um, and if somebody wants to take their family on a vacation where they can learn about history, that could be anywhere in the United States. Lots of places would fit that bill. But if I'm the one who wrote the blog and I can say, you know, take your let your kids live and experience history, um, and stay at our bed and breakfast, then somebody who never even considered Charleston, South Carolina, now suddenly is considering it because it ended up being a good solution for their problem of wanting to take their kids on a vacation where they would learn about history. So the next thing is these keywords that we keep talking about, how do we know if they have good search traffic? Well, if you go into Google's Keyword Planner as part of AdWords, you'll see that they have a Keyword Planner. Um, and what it shows you is like this is – uh, this one is showing you uh, best beaches in Maui, and you can see all the search traffic. So you can see it's about uh, in the month of December, it was about 13,000 people a month doing searches on it. And come January, it was more like 15,000. But it pops way up in around like September, August and September, to closer to 20,000 searches per month. So this is the science behind our blog is that we'll look at when that search traffic peaks and then we'll write the blog post two months in, in advance. And the reason we do that is so that Google has time to crawl that content, be aware of it, so that they can serve it up um, when that search traffic peaks. So um, that's the way you use this tool, and that's how you know you're writing on a, a term that has a lot of search traffic, and you know you, you know it's one where you're gonna where you're gonna get people visiting your site. So the big thing that we have to just be straight with you on is that if you're not willing to do the work and to put in the, the research, then honestly, you shouldn't blog. Um, I'm certain you've got far better things to do than to spend uh, an hour or two banging your head against the wall on something that's not going to drive organic traffic. So um, I invite you to really work hard to try and do it, to um, try your best to write really smart blogs that accomplish the purpose and to check into your Google Analytics and see if it's if it's working. Uh, if it's not, then I recommend you either find someone to do it for you or you spend your time elsewhere um, because nobody has time to be doing something that doesn't drive results. So we do recommend using a professional writer. And of course we do because we have professional writers <laughs> to offer you. But here's how you can decide for yourself if you really need to or not. Um, the first question I ask myself is, does it take you longer than two hours to write 500 words? If it does, um, then writing doesn't come naturally to you and it's probably not a good use of your time. Uh, have you been blogging? Have you gone back and checked and 
no success? Have you looked and see how much traffic is your blog post bringing to your website? Have you looked to see if you're ranking on any of the keywords? If you've been doing this and you haven't been successful, then I suggest that you get some help with a professional writer. Or even maybe you can write and maybe you even do it successfully, but you ask yourself the question, is my time better spent on something else? Um, you can outsource the writing of a blog. You can't outsource creating a great experience for your guests. That's something that you have to be hands on for. So you have to just decide on that trade off. But just be advised, you know, people really are searching for information um, and they want their questions answered and they are turning to Google for it. So the content that you have, it has to be compelling, it has to be informative, and it's got to be description, descriptive. Excuse me. If it's not a good answer, Google's not going to serve it up because Google is its own, has its own objectives, and their objective is to be the best search engine and to provide great answers for people's questions. Uh, if people, if you rank and then people bounce off your page in time, Google's going to realize that yours is not a good answer for the question, and they're going to serve somebody else as a, up as a better um, website to visit. But also remember that each post has to really make the reader want to stay in your area and and visit your destination and that they want to stay with you. So don't forget that. Answer the question, absolutely. But you have permission then to follow up with and while you're here, enjoy our amazing breakfast and or stay at our amazing properties. So our third tip is include the SEO strategies. So like we talked about, um, about the long tail keywords, um, but there's other tips too. Your blog should be about 500 to 700 words. Um, and I can tell you that when we started doing this, we were writing blogs at around 300 to 500 words and they were performing. But because we we're very results oriented, we started noticing that um, when we wrote longer ones, they were performing even better. And so we changed our standard. We evolve as all of marketing and Google algorithms and everything, all the powers that be evolves. So do we. So now we've realized that 500 to 700 words is really the sweet spot. And what that means is anything less than 500 words probably isn't going to isn't going to be effective. But anything more than 700 words probably isn't necessary. So that's why we we really look for that range so that we're using our time effectively. When it comes to these long tail keywords, you don't want to force them because you have to write for a human being who's reading but you should feature it three to eight times. And there's lots of ways to do it actually in the back end that gets you there. So if you put the long tail keyword in the URL, that's one time. If it's in the tab um, that's that you hover over the tab at the very top of your, your search tabs, if the keyword's in there, that's two times featured. If you use it as the alt tag with your image, that's three. You put it in the meta description and in the, in the slug, now you're up to five times. Now all I have to do is put it in your opening paragraph, put it in some some headlines, a couple more places throughout the content. And before you know it, you've got that keyword featured three to eight times. And the reason for that is you really want Google to know that this post is about this keyword. So that's the way you do it. Um, another great practice is to include internal and external links um, within your post. So the internal links make sense because the whole point was to get them to your website. Now the next point once they're there is to get them to further engage and ideally to book with you. So the internal links would go to check out our rooms, check out our properties, um, check out our breakfast or our amenities. Um, there are things to do in the area. Whatever those uh, internal pages to your website, you want to drive them to that to there within your blog post. But you also want two external links to reputable websites because then that shows to Google that you're a reputable website. So if you're in the Kissimmee area, you might link out to one of the um, water parks or link out to um, Disney events, things along those lines. Uh, use uh, keyword rich anchor text. What that means is don't say click here. Uh, instead, say if you're looking for things to do in the area, things to do in the area is what you hyperlink and you take it to that page in your website. Uh, for the best water park for your family dollar, go to this place in Kissimmee and that external link, but you, you use the actual words that you link. You don't just Type the word link or click here. Um, another best practice is to write strong, compelling meta description. So when we think about all the all the steps that it takes for somebody to find you, first they've got their keyword. You have to rank on page one. You have to have a, a subject line that's compelling, and then after that, there's that little bit of text that's below it. Um, 
that you can really optimize that to just really make sure that yours is the one that they click on after they've done their search. Um, if you don't write a meta description, it will just auto pull the first 120 characters from the opening sentence of your blog post, which might not be as compelling as what you'd like it to be. So really think about what's the journey. If somebody's looking for an answer to this question, what's going to make them want to click on mine beyond my subject, um, my subject line? And that's the meta description. We talked a little before about providing an answer to the latent search index terms. That was those terms at the bottom of any search page that says uh, Google related search it. That's a great practice for helping make sure that your blog gets ranked. Uh, the other important best practice is make sure your blog page lives on your website. Uh, this is shocking to me, but a lot of people, um, a lot of people just have a blog page that's external to their websites, oftentimes because they built their website and then found out later that they needed a blog. And instead of redoing their website, they just do a blog page by itself. Um, but it's not the best practice. You want people going to your website. You want them to be able to click around and see everything that's amazing about your place. And, and you want them to be able to book. Uh, and the way it should look on your URL is www.thenameofyourin or your vacationrental.com slash blog. Uh, that's the ideal um, structure that you want for your URL. So we talked a bit before about being consistent and posting frequently. Um, honestly, people ask me how frequently should I should I blog, and the answer is how how often do you want to get found? Um, at that rate, it's ten times a day. But who's got time for that? Uh, we find that posting weekly is a really good cadence, um, but the consistency matters just as much. So, you know, be realistic and think about it. If you don't aim for blogging weekly and then get overwhelmed and then just stop doing it all together. It might be better for you to say realistically, I can write one per month um, and make sure you do that consistently. And then as that gets easier for you and, and you've got the hang of it, you know, increase the frequency to twice a month until you can get to weekly. Um, Google does reward you for consistency as much as they do um, on the word count and the content. Uh, and don't give up if you don't see results in the first three to six months. I mean, you should be able to look and see is there some traffic coming to your site from your blog. Um, but if you look at this example here, you know, come April, there there wasn't very much at all. And then we started seeing getting some good times here in January, but it really picked up in July. Um, and part of the reason is, is that with every single post, with every passing week, we were increasing the amount of content on the website by 500 to 700 words. And we were doing that consistently and we were constantly having fresh content on our website. And over time, I don't know how, honestly, I don't know how Google tracks it, but we see this response over and over again. Um, somehow or another, they reward you for that content and that consistency. But it does take a good six to eight months um, for it to really work. And one of the ways, one of the proof points is that this blog that we wrote back here in March it's probably still sending traffic to the website here in July. Um, each time you write a blog post, it can be delivering, as long as it's a good answer to the question and it ranks, it'll deliver traffic to your website for years to come. Um, so that's some about how this uh, accumulates and how you start to really see um, a lot of traffic, both organic and direct. Um, the next thing to talk about is doing your research ahead of time will allow you to be organized and prepare for this type of consistency. So I showed you that strategy calendar uh, earlier in the session. Well, and this is what we do. We sit down once a quarter and we build a strategy calendar. We go into the Google AdWords and we look at the keyword planner and we identify all the terms that we think are relevant for the destination that enjoy good search traffic and are going to peak within two months of the time period when we plan to write the blog. And we just look for it. So it's like 12, maybe there's 14 long tail keywords that you have to find in a set in a setting. Uh, in that same session, we'll we'll write our subject lines. Uh, so that you might spend a, a half a day once a quarter doing that research of what long tail keyword to go after and what subject line you want to write. And then when it's time to actually go and write it, all that research is done. You just have to sit down and write it. And you guys live there. You know your destination. Uh, you can also go to Google and see what's currently ranking uh, for that long tail keyword and see how you might write a better answer. 
and remembering, you know, writing for those related searches. All those things are going to help make sure that once you sit down to write it, that um, you're going to go ahead and be a better answer than some of the stuff that's currently ranking. So we, this might feel overwhelming, all of what we're talking about with the blog, but here's here's the payoff. Now, once you've written that blog, you can go and push that out through all your other marketing channels. Some people probably wonder, well, what do I send emails about? What should I post in social media? Those kinds of things. You've done all this work on the destination of writing a really highly researched and well-written blog post. Go ahead and send it out. Um, use it in your email campaign. And because you did that research, even on your subject line, that can be the subject line of your email campaign. So I'll tell you a little story for myself. Um, and we talked about five stages of travel, which is, I'll repeat it again, dreaming, planning, booking, experiencing and remem and remembering. Uh, we live in Charleston. I like to go up to Blowing Rock, uh, North Carolina in the fall. I love to go see the fall foliage. And I've um, stayed at a couple places up there. And oftentimes, you know, now I'm in their email database. Um, if they write me something about the fall foliage, I'm going to open that email for sure. Uh, partly because it's only a couple of hour drive and I, I, I like to do it every year. But um, in particular, this place will link out to it's some kind of a, about the full foliage of when they think it's going to peak and if they're, if it's going to be really vibrant colors based on the rain, um, all those kinds of different things. And so I always like it plants a seed in my head. I'm like, oh, my gosh, we've got to plan that. I've got to carve out a weekend to go because I just love to do that every year. Uh, you can start to imagine how you can do that yourself in your own area and you know maybe everybody's not going to open every single email but if they've been to your destination and they've stayed with you and had a great experience and you write a blog post about something else that's you know amazing about your area they're going to have fond memories of that and they're going to open it and and read it again and maybe they're going to send it to a friend and say this was so great when we went last time you guys should think about it or maybe say to you know their spouse let's go do that again um or you might write about something that they wanted to experience, but they didn't have time the last time. So uh, this allows your email to be a little bit more friendly and less salesy, um, and it's still highly researched. Same thing with social media. A lot of people go to a lot of effort to post on social media, and they never link back to their own website. Um, everything that you do for marketing should be for a purpose, and that purpose, no matter what the platform, should be to drive people to your website. And then once they're on their website, your website's job is to convert that person to giving you their email address or booking with you. So if you're putting effort on social media and you're not linking back to your website, it doesn't have to be 100 percent of your social media posts, but at least 30 percent of your posts should be driving people back. Check out our rooms, check out our specials, read our blog. Um, when the blog lives on your website, all you got to do is grab that URL, drop it into social media. The picture will fetch. The link will be right there. It's, it's easy as can be. And now, boom, you've got your social media posts for um, for the time period, and it took you one second to do. And like I said, it is an effective tool to maintain that relationship with past guests um, because they will have fond memories of it, and they will take a look at that in your email campaigns or if they're following you on social media. Um, another group of you might be um, the type of scenario like a scenario of mine. My mother lives in Bradenton, Florida. I go there at least twice a year. So now I follow a couple of local pages to see what's going on so that I know what to plan to do next time I go. Um, it's one stop shop. I don't have to do a bunch of research. I can, you know, this bed and breakfast is a destination expert and they just post everything on their social media and it just shows up in my newsfeed. That's a relevant one for me to look at because I go to Bradenton, Florida, Florida a couple times a year. So you can start to see how um, once you do this work with your blog, how it can um, make the rest of your marketing efforts a little bit quicker. So, again, we talked about doing this for a purpose and making it worth your time. We're in business to grow our to grow our businesses. Um, so the, here's the dollars and cents of it. So traffic converts to direct bookings. And here's how. First step is your blog. Let's say it generates 800 additional visits per month. Now, when I say a blog, I'm. I'm actually talking about your whole blog page, so all your blog posts combined. And you should check that for yourself. If you've been blogging for a couple of years and you're not seeing 800 visits per month or somewhere in that vicinity, uh, then your blogging's not effective because um, it's not unreasonable to see 800 additional visits in a month 
um, if you've been blogging for years and, and, your, and your blogs are ranking. Well, let's just presume that you are, that you're getting 800 visits a month. And let's just say your website converts at a half of a percent. Uh, most websites convert somewhere between a half to one and a half to two percent. Uh, so we're assuming on the low on the low end, that's a half percent conversion. So 800 times a half percent equals four bookings. Uh, your average night, we'd say, is $150. Average length of stay is two nights. So four bookings times 150 a night times two nights is $1,200 in monthly revenue. Um, that's the opportunity. That's a you know month in month out. And the other thing to keep in mind is that if your blog's effective, you can spend less promoting on the OTA. Um, a lot of times people will say, I don't spend on marketing, but 80% of my traffic is coming from the OTAs. Well, I hate to tell you, but you're spending on marketing. Um, you're just paying it to the OTA. Uh, and the thing is, is as soon as you stop, if, if you ever do stop, then that traffic goes away. Uh, when you write a blog, that traffic lives for as long as that that blog lives. And as long as you make sure that you're refreshing that content, um, if it if it needs to be refreshed, like if it's about an annual event and the details change, you want to go in and change that every year and keep it um, fresh. But then that that traffic is going to constantly keep bringing um, really, really high quality traffic to your website. So we want you to be able to take this next step and to have a better blog. And um, I will tell you one thing really quickly. If the whole idea of this keyword research overwhelms you, you can start and dip your toe in the water a different way and just think about what are the questions that people ask you when they, after they book and they arrive on, on property, what things do they ask you about? Do they ask you about the best pubs? Do they ask you about music? Do they ask you about um you know, wine tastings, things along those lines. Think about the common questions people ask you about and then use that for your long tail keyword. And, and you can kind of take a poor man's approach that way to at least get your first couple blogs off the, off the ground. But for the offer that we're extending is that I will do the research for you. I will go into the keyword analyzer and find the long tail keywords that are relevant and have good search traffic. I'll write your blog titles, four of them for you so that you can just sit down and write them. Um, and what we'll do is I'll spend 30 minutes with you looking at what you're currently doing and what you could be doing differently, or if you're not doing it at all, you know, the direction to, to go in. And this is a complimentary offer. So I hope that you guys will take a few minutes and take advantage of this offer and click the button uh, to say yes, and we'll go ahead and make that happen for you. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, we are going to have another webinar on June 21st. That webinar is going to be about disaster preparation, um, meaning uh, and in this past year there's been volcanoes and hurricanes and flooding and fires, all kinds of things um, that have really been crippling to some people in our industry. Um, and when you're going through those natural disasters, it's awful, but um, you can have a plan in place uh, that allows you to deal with the task at hand of the natural disaster, but know that you've got information ready to go out in the right capacity. And so that's what we're going to walk you through last time, next time. So I hope that you'll join us for that webinar. I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your day, and I hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.